Hello, in this brief tutorial I'm going to be showing how to convert individual raw data values into normalized data which shows the data as a percentage of a given time point. I'll explain what I mean. In these data set we see here we have our replicates which are raw data and we're showing this as an arbitrary unit as a response to a stimulus. We have time down the side here, 0 to 6 minutes and each of our replicates, these could be different subjects for instance, 1, 2, 3 and 4, each of them have responded to the stimulus in a way that has changed their response measurement. On average you can see the response goes up and then comes down again. But there is a very large standard deviation here simply because the data themselves are very variable. You can see in the raw data we've plotted here that in fact the difference between at time zero between uh, subject number one and subject number four is actually quite extreme. The difference between subject one and subject two isn't particularly large and then subject three is somewhere between subject one and two and subject four. So you can see if you plot these data as a mean there is indeed a peak at 3 minutes and then it comes down at 6, but the variation or the variance indicated by the standard deviation bars is very large and therefore the group data may not be suitable for presenting because any differences might be masked within this large variance you can see here. So my intention with these data is to plot them as a percentage of time zero and I've pre-prepared my graph here to plot them as a percentage of time zero. So how do I work these out as a percentage of each group's time zero? Well, the very easy way of doing this is to set up a little formula that divides this cell by itself and then multiplies it by a hundred and that would give us the hundred percent. And then the second formula down is this cell divided by this cell multiplied by a hundred and then this cell multiplied by this cell, sorry, this cell divided by this cell and multiplied by 100. And you can see we're creating then a series of percentages that show a percentage of our zero time point for subject one. So we can enter this formula into this pre-prepared little uh, space here. We type in equals and we click on that cell. The best thing to do is actually put these in brackets first. Makes life a little bit easier for the maths. So we select D6. We then divide not by D6, but we divide by D, and then we type in $6. What D$6 does is it limits you to row number 6. The dollar locks your selection at row 6, and I'll show you why that's important in a second. We then multiply that by 100, to give us a percentage and hit the return button. And you can see we've got 100% here. If I then copy this down to the next cell by clicking on the box in the corner and expanding, you'll notice the second cell has also got the D$6 in the formula, so it is still referring to D6. We can then click on that cell and drop that down all the way to the bottom and you can see now we've got our data set expanded to fill. We then do the same with cell number two. We type equals, open parentheses, the cell divided by E dollar six, and then multiply that by 100. And you can see we can bring them down. Of course, we can make life very easy for ourselves by then just dragging that across all the way and then dragging it all the way down as well. And we get a nice little replicate of our data there. I'm just going to move the decimal places so it looks a little bit easier on the eye uh, and reduce the decimal places of our standard deviation just so you can compare them. Of course, what we have now is we have a data set where the standard deviation of our time zero is zero because they're all 100% of themselves. 
And that is one of the reasons why I've ne neglected to put these data on this graph here, because we don't really want to show the 100% with no variation, because all the, the subjects are 100% of themselves. But now you can see here the data go up and peak at three minutes, and then fall down and trough back at six minutes. You might want to expand your graph to fill this zero time point, so you can click on your graph, and I'm just going to bring that up to show time point zero as well, just for continuity's sake. And you can now see we plotted a very similar data set. The mean number looks the same shape as it was in the group data, but now all of these individual data points are plotted, shown as a percentage of their own time zero. I'm going to very briefly show you the other way of doing this, which would be all the numbers as a percentage of the average of time zero. And you'll see how those data differ, given that we have quite a high variation in our baseline. So to do the average, you wouldn't choose D dollar six, you would choose dollar H dollar six. So in this case, we want to choose this average number in all of our cells. And what we can do is we then copy those data across our four groups and then copy down all the way to time six. And you'll see what happens when we do them as a percentage. Sure enough, our baseline is 100% average of itself, but it has a very large variation here, plus or minus almost 50. That's plus or minus 50% of its own data. And then you can see the error bars go up and down as they do in the group data. So I hope that makes sense. I'm going to put this back to as it was, back to D6, copy them across, and copy them down. So I hope that makes sense. It's a very simple way of normalizing data. Just be aware that normalizing data isn't always the right thing to do. Um, if you're doing the correct analyses, for instance, if you're doing a two-way or one-way ANOVA with this data set, in fact, this would be a one-way ANOVA, you might well pick up differences between the groups without needing to show it graphically. But it's worth being aware that this is a possibility. It's very simple maths, and it may help you understand your data.